What's up people, hope you're having an awesome day, I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video here at Most Amazing Top 10. I feel like the first thing I remember Will Smith ever being in was Men in Black. I know all the hardcore Fresh Prince fans are going to be shocked, but it's true, that's, that's the first thing I saw him in. Men in Black was such an iconic film, honestly no wonder they made two sequels and an animated series. A quick recap for people who haven't seen it, the Men in Black are agents who protect the earth from intergalactic threats and keep alien activity on earth a secret. In the movie, alien refugees are disguised among humans so the men in black monitor their activity, erasing people's memories if they happen to see something they shouldn't. So having said that, this is the top 10 scary men in black sightings. Starting off with number 10 is the disappearing coin. Dr. Herbert Hopkins was a consultant on a UFO case in Maine involving a man called Barney Hill who had allegedly been abducted. One night he got a call from an activist in the UFO community asking if they could meet and discuss the case. Hopkins agreed to meet the man but a few minutes later there was a knock on his door. The man didn't seem like an activist, he was in a black suit and tie, he had no hair, no eyebrows and was the palest person Hopkins had ever seen. The weirder part was Hopkins never disclosed his address, yet the man just showed up anyway and when he did the doctor's dog would not stop barking at him. The man asked him about the case and afterwards told him he had two coins in his pocket and told Herbert to take one of them out. He did so and the agent told him to watch the coin very closely and he did. It began to take on a silvery appearance and then started going out of focus and fading away till it wasn't there at all. The agent then stared at Hopkins for a while and said the coin would never be seen on earth again and then inquired about what all he knew about Barney Hill. Freaked out, Hopkins said he thought Hill might have died before the abduction took place and the agent told him he was exactly right and that Hill didn't have a heart, much like him not having a coin. I don't really get the link or what he meant by that, but anyway, he then advised Hopkins to destroy all information he had on the case and Hopkins complied and burnt all of it. Afterwards he was experiencing a lot of phone troubles and his company said his line had been tampered with and he immediately knew they had tapped his line. He never saw the man again. Coming in at number 9 is the Loch Ness Death. Growing up I think we all thought there was a massive monster or animal of some kind in Loch Ness, like an ancient dinosaur, a mythical creature that was actually real, whatever made our young hearts happy. One man in specific named Frederick Holliday was known for his passion for cryptozoology and had dedicated years of his life looking for evidence of a life in Loch Ness. One day while investigating, Holliday looked towards a hill near the lake and saw a man in a black suit. Enter our brooding agent. Holliday didn't think much of it at first considering it was a very popular tourist spot but he was freaked out by the fact the man seemed to be staring straight at him. Despite being so far away from him, Holliday felt a malevolence come off him that actually reached him. Before he had a chance to remove himself from the situation, he heard a strange sound and the man just disappeared into thin air. He never saw the man again but a year later he went back to Loch Ness for more studies and ended up having a heart attack. The weirdest part? He died passing over the exact same spot the agent had been standing in a year prior and I feel like that was very much not a coincidence at all. At number 8 we have the dizzy spell. Dr. Albert K. Bender was a famous researcher who founded the International Flying Saucer Bureau and you may have not heard of it because he abruptly shut it down after being visited by the men in black. By 1955, he was so close to releasing a paper proving the US government had covered up proof of UFOs. He was about to publish his paper in the Space Review but alas that was never going to fly with the agents was it and so they decided to pay him a visit. One night when Bender was in bed he suddenly felt a nauseating dizzy spell. He started seeing many dark shapes in his room and thought perhaps he was going to pass out or he was just seeing things but the shapes slowly took form and materialized into men in black suits and hats. He couldn't see their faces but the only thing he could see were their eyes that were glowing. The men could somehow speak to Bender's mind directly without saying a word. They forced him to destroy his findings and stop his research into the subject. As soon as this encounter took place, Bender was scarred for life. He shut down the bureau and people claim he was never the same. His other work was almost unreadable after that and he lived with perpetual anxiety and fear of the men. He'd get continued phone calls with no one on the other end and he ended up dying in 2002. See this is what happens when someone gets too close to the truth. They shut them up and get rid of them. Filling our number 7 slot is the footage and this was actual camera footage of men in black in a Canadian hotel. The two men showed up asking questions about one of the employees. The employee claimed they had recently seen a UFO and told all their friends about it and boom in the next couple of days the men in black showed up. 
I mean efficient, they work fast, I'll give them that. Thankfully that day the employee in question wasn't at work so they dodged a bullet. But similar to Dr Hopkins case, the staff described the men as having no hair on their head or face and perhaps disguising it with a wig maybe and having weirdly hypnotizing eyes. The eyes are quite interesting because in the movie the agents use memory erasing neuralizers but maybe in real life they just use their eyes. And honestly that'd be a lot more convenient than carrying out whatever a neuralizer is, that's for sure. Their outfits were also really questionable, the black suits just fit weirdly, it's like they were trying so hard to be normal and fit in but something was just wrong. They looked like mafia bosses from a noir movie, honestly. They stuck around asking the employees more questions about theories they might have had and then they left. It left the staff quite shaken and I honestly don't blame them. Now at number 6 is Wool. This story was from an anonymous man who said he was sightseeing in Washington DC one summer and accidentally wandered into the state department building. First of all, I don't think anyone can just accidentally go in there, I'm sure there's intense security checks but anyway, he went through the lobby for a while before security started becoming suspicious of him and ushered him out. But before they did, the elevator opened and 5 men came out, 2 in grey suits who seemed otherwise unremarkable and 3 in black suits wearing black hats that obscured their eyes and faces completely. They were even wearing long black trench coats despite it being the middle of the summer and boiling. As the group was walking by, one of the men in black slipped on the marble floor and fell, dropping his portfolio while he did so. Falling down, that's quite unbecoming of a man in black but okay. The fall happened quite near to the man who was being ushered out so he helped him up and while doing so realised the man's legs seemed critically weak. It felt to him like there was just a lot of wool under the suit and that's what gave its bulky cartoonish appearance. The cherry on top was despite falling on quite a hard marble floor, the man's expression never flinched or changed once, no pain, no feeling, nothing. And right next to the portfolio, the man found a coin that had writing on it in a language he couldn't recognise, with a wolf man on one side and two moons and some navigational lines on the other. Coming in at number 5 is the stalker. Jack Robinson and his wife Mary were both avid UFO researchers way back when, but the deeper they got, the weirder their life got. They would come home and find their house rummaged through and all their UFO files disturbed and disrupted. Someone kept gaining entry into their house no matter how many times they changed their locks. Mary then started noticing a bizarre tall man in a bulky black suit and hat that would consistently stare at their apartment from the doorway. She was scared that that man was one breaking into their house so she mentioned it to her friend Tim. Tim drove them both there and actually took a picture of the man who was believed to be a men in black agent. My only thing with this story is if the agents really wanted the couple to stop, why didn't they just steal all their UFO files instead of just rummaging through them, just cut to the chase. At number 4 are the photos. Some of you may know of Danny Gordon who used to be a very famous radio personality. Towards the end of the 80s, Danny became obsessed with the Wythe County UFO sightings. Countless people in the county said they had seen bizarre objects in the sky and he wanted to get photographic proof. There was even one time a full school bus of kids saw UFOs going over a shopping mall as he quickly took the photos. And those photos were at a very close range and they proved the crafts weren't man made, they weren't from this earth. But after he had captured the proof, Danny's life started going downhill. He got a call from an anonymous ex-military man who warned him that his photos could cost him everything and to stop research for his family's sake. When in doubt, emotional blackmail is the way to go, apparently. Either way, it didn't end there. A few days later, two men in black showed up at his house claiming they were journalists at a magazine and wanted to interview him about the pictures. After the interview was over, the men left and Danny realised his photos were all gone as well. He then called the magazine they said they worked for and they claimed they'd never heard of Danny let alone commissioned an article about him. Things got even worse when he suffered a heart attack and even his doctor advised him to stop the research since it was jeopardising his health. He gave up in the end and never saw the men again. Filling at number 3 slot is the mailman. A postal worker in Washington DC said he was delivering mail one day and decided to chill for a bit and have an apple. He finished it and saw no trash cans around and decided to just throw it on the ground and after which a security guard approached him lecturing him and telling him that the area and building he's in is under constant surveillance all the time and that it's not safe for him to do that. 
First of all, say no to littering, never litter, ever. He thought about what the security guard said but not too much and just went on his way. A few days later he was on his usual delivery run when he came back to the same building. He saw three men going towards the building except they weren't men at all. They looked like they were waddling not walking and they were impossibly thin. And it was their frames that freaked him out more than anything else. He went inside the building regardless because aliens aside he still had to do his job. As soon as he stepped foot into the building a group of men in black surrounded him asking him what he had just seen. He was about to speak when one of the thin figures he saw earlier came up next to him and then he really couldn't speak even if he wanted to. He was horrified. The men grilled him for hours and hours and then let him go and the next day his mail route had anonymously been changed. Now at number 2 is the bullet. Paul Miller worked in the American Air Force and one day whilst returning home from a hunting trip he witnessed a gigantic luminous disc in the sky. He followed the path of the disc and saw it land in an empty field and out of it came two humanoid looking figures. A trained army man, Miller didn't even hesitate to pull out his gun and shoot one. His aim was almost impeccable and he was sure he had hit one of them. He quickly ran towards his car but realized he had suddenly lost time. What should have been 30 seconds getting to his car had been 3 hours. Trying not to overthink it, he went back to work the next day and encountered 3 men in black. They said they had his file and that they knew everything even though he hadn't told anyone about what happened. They gently threatened him saying it'd be best if he forgot the whole thing and Miller was terrified. They knew his address, his name, his parents' address, everything. So not wanting to take any chances, he said nothing. And finally at number 1 is the base. This was from Redditor Karathis59 who said their older brother was in the army and one night him, his wife and some friends went to a hill near their base to look at the moon. Quite a romantic idea I must say. They probably didn't know what was about to happen to them. But while they were there they saw a blazing blue orb pulling moves that no human aircraft could do and that was a fact considering the elder brother was an expert in aircraft extant. The group was sat there in awe just looking at the craft before the lights stopped and the craft just stayed hovering in the sky almost like it was watching them watch it. This was happening at about 10pm now and all of a sudden the craft lunged towards them and the next thing you know they opened their eyes and it was 4am and they were hundreds of miles away from the base in the middle of a random wheat field. They got out trying to gauge their tire tracks to see which way they came from but they were no tracks. The car just got there like it fell out of the sky which at this point I believe happened. A few days later men in black visited the brother's wife and threatened her to not talk about anything she'd seen. They then showed up at the base for the brother and threatened him as well. Which wasn't even possible because the base was in a controlled access intelligence area and randomers can just walk in. But the the strangest part was that no one saw them come and go other than the brother. It's like they were invisible or camouflaged which I'm sure would be very easy for aliens to accomplish so that's probably what happened. Either way the family never saw the men in black again but the wife of the brother still bursts into tears every time they're mentioned. Talk about leaving a lasting impression. And there you have it guys, real men in black are evidently a lot more menacing than the ones in the movie. At least the ones in the movie smiled and laughed occasionally. These ones seem hell bent on scaring the living daylights out of you and in most of these cases if not all, it worked. Let me know if you've ever had any men in black experiences and as always I'm your host Eamon Hassan and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!